All right, so now we're joined by Deba Dada Dash, who's running for City Council District 5. So go ahead with a two minute introduction. Okay. Uh, hi, my, my name is Deba Dada Dash. I go by my last name, Dash, making it easier for all of you. Um, I moved uh, to the United States in 1996 and I uh, lived in many cities uh, before moving to Seattle in 2001. And in 2001, when we moved in, uh, the city, in fact, uh, embraced us and we loved this city so much so that we decided, we means my family, my wife and my daughter, um, decided to stay here forever. We didn't want to move anywhere else because of the cultural diversity and because of the inclusiveness. And since then, uh, I have been involved with many non-profit organizations uh, in, from human services to economic development areas. Um, 15 years of advocacy in both these areas uh, prompted me uh, to run for public office because I believe that uh, whoever has spent that much of years in advocacy will definitely be very caring in, in, in our public policies, uh, benefiting uh, the greater good for the community. So that's how I decided and I worked for Starwood Hotels and while working for full time I was able to give that much of time to my advocacy role. So at <coughs> present I'm doing the same. I'm coming straight from my work and I will be doing so till the campaign is over. Representing the real middle class, working class in the city council, which is very much needed. Uh, the other reason I'm running for city council is uh, in 15 years I've been living in North Seattle and I have seen um, that a lot of things can be done which have not been done. A lot of things are happening but can happen a little better way. Uh, and I will, in the due course of time, I will share that with you all. I believe some questions will be there pertaining to those things. So that's my introduction here. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. So now we have our four prepared questions. These are two minute answers and if you want to turn the paper over in front of you, you can read along as we say them aloud. And I think we left off, uh, Elizabeth, will you do number one? Seattle is experiencing a housing affordability crisis. Several policy responses have been suggested, including linkage fees, incentive zoning, subsidized housing, and rent control, among others. What is your approach to keeping Seattle affordable? That's, a, I think, number one question uh, everybody has, and it has been a long-standing issue. Seattle is going, uh, getting out of uh, reach of affordability for a lot of people. Uh, as a working class, as a working uh, class, uh, I can easily feel the pinch uh, of affordability. And when we talk about uh, minimum wage uh, being raised uh, to $15, not now, but in the, long, in the next four, three, four years, that will give $31,000 annual income to a minimum wage earner. And as per the housing urban development uh, department's definition, 30% of that to be spent on rental or housing. That is $9,000, $750 per, <coughs> per rental apartment, which is not available. The rental uh, in the Seattle area is going up. <coughs> Last year, if you compare it, it has gone up by 8 to 9%. One bedroom apartment is costing us almost $1,200 per month. It is certainly not affordable. The ideas here, the uh, policies here, like linkage fee, incentive zoning, house subsidy, subsidized housing, rent control, are all important, but we need to do something little more. Being in economic development area, uh, I have experienced that we can use certainly a federal tool that is EV5 investment that brings in a lot of investments from outside for giving them permanent resident or an investment to give them green card. Those investments are being used now to build a hotel and condos. And each project costs 135 to 150 million. Now six of those projects are now in the Seattle downtown area. We can, if we can use EV5 investments for condos and hotels, we can easily definitely spend that much of money bring that investment for building affordable housing units integrated with walkable, livable, sustainable areas in all neighborhoods, not necessarily in one area. That's my idea. We can do, we can make Seattle more affordable. Okay, Clayton, number two. <clears throat> uh, last year, 
voters approved a levy to fund the universal preschool pilot program. After the pilot concludes, how will you fund the full implementation of the program? And what policy changes will you make to ensure this plan addresses educational disparities in our city? Well, levies are, I always support levies for uh, some pilot programs. But we need to learn uh, also throughout the process what else we can do to make it better. If it is successful, if we can replicate it in other parts of the city. And educational disparities are not taking place at one, one, at one, one place, or it is not confined to only a certain income group areas. It is widespread. It is not only it is not only one focused uh, one focused area, economic zone areas. So we need to learn and we need to implement uh, the success into other areas too. And uh, another thing is we need to discuss with the stakeholders of the community and the experts to get their feedback and reports and, and, and their ideas and thought process. Teachers, stakeholders, parents. And then we can take a decision on that, how to, how to work on this. I'm not a, a sub -ex expert in this matter, in this, in this area, so I cannot, I cannot give you the details on, on this particular, um, particular area, the preschool pilot program. So I will be very frank that we can be inclusive, we can bring in the experts to get their thought process and can work on it. So I just, I just don't want to make up things which I don't know. Thank you. Uh, John, number three. Okay. Bertha is still stuck. What options does the City of Seattle have with respect to potential cost overruns, the waterfront, transit, and unsafe viaduct? <clears throat> this, is, this is really unfortunate. Um, and I, I can think of going somewhere without any exit strategy. Um, I think a lot of people were talking about this when uh, this tunnel project uh, was uh, accepted or was approved. At that time, a lot of speculations were there that without uh, thinking about the cost overruns and, and without thinking of any having any backup plan, it might be a little too risky to go for this tunnel project. But whatever said is whatever said is done. Um, I, of course, I believe that uh, light rail um, transit. Those are the viable uh, options. Uh, I, I can't say about Bartha, how it is going to be fixed. Uh, it, has to cost, it has to cost a lot of money for us. And uh, I don't know how, how they will replace this. I don't have any idea that how, how they replace uh, Bartha with some other project. But uh, as far as the um, options are concerned, I still believe transit, light rail, are the most viable and most, I would say, most doable kind of um, thing we need to adopt. They are good for the environment, and they are good. They are not very uh, expensive, and they can easily be done. And I'm so glad that the light rail now being extended from airport mm -hmm. from to the Northgate area, and they are now thinking of Northgate to Leanwood area. I would rather see that they should connect that. To not from not get to Bofill to to get it closer to the 405 corridor. So, but that's a visionary plan. It is it is it is not a, it, just as a visionary. I'm just telling you, but it it has not been discussed yet. But those are the most viable plans uh, for me. Uh, but uh, I don't have any idea how, how they are going to replace it. It is going to be very costly and expensive. Okay, David, number four. Uh, Seattle is the fastest growing big city in the country. Should we encourage or discourage this growth, and what policy changes are necessary to accommodate the growth? Uh, we live in a global economy, and the world is changing really fast. When we talk about Seattle being from India, I can tell you, people immediately recognize it. Oh yeah, this is the this is the city of Boeing and Microsoft. They don't care Redmond, Redmond, Redmond and Burbank, Everett. They just think Seattle. And Seattle is a growing city. It is estimated and reported that 20,000 to 25,000 people will be moving in every year to this city. So city is growing. Uh, I will not say it is a uh, discourage or encourage to growth. Uh, it is going to happen. 
that is the truth. We need to, we need to, we need to take it that way. We have to accept it. Uh, it is not going to stop. Nobody is going to stop. And it is also, it will be also uh, absurd or it will be stupid enough for in our parts that it will stop, thinking that it will stop. Rather, we should take it as an opportunity to uh, accept and embrace that growth and can make policy or can make and adopt a policy so that everybody will can share the goodness of it. Uh, we can create a lot of um, investment opportunities all over Seattle, not necessarily focused on, on one area like downtown. We can, we can improve a lot of economic development zones in other districts. We can create a lot of affordable housing opportunities using those investments. We can uh, have some corporate social responsibility to build a permanent shelter for homelessness. Um, we can create more job opportunities by having so that not heavy industries, but those industries which, which can high pay high paying jobs. Uh, and that will immediately, that will automatically bring the investment and the, bring the money back to our economy. So we need, to, we, we need to adopt that kind of policy. We need to promote Seattle tourism. We need to accept this growth and we'll be everywhere. We, we are a global city. So uh, we have the potential. We should not reject it. We should embrace it. Great. So we have time for a few follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. So yeah, Michael, John, and David. What do you feel is the number one issue facing District 5 specifically? District 5, the number one issue, I will say the infrastructure. My district is, when you look at the sidewalks in District 5, it is all red. It's a red, it's a red district. Um, there is no sidewalk at all. A sidewalk discourages people to go out to walk. It feels scary to share the same road with your pets and babies. Um, it, it, it is a disgrace. It is an insult. For a global city, it, it is not acceptable. That is the number one, I will say. Uh, community centers, the connectivity among all the neighborhoods, um, that is that will be second. So, but your question was first, so it was sidewalks and sidewalks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, John. I had a, a similar question. It's yeah. um, what's your vision for the development of Aurora Boulevard and yeah. the North, North End? Yeah. That's my topic. <laughs> and there was a softball question. Oh, no, no, it's not softball. 85th to 145th, the Aurora Avenue. Uh, I have been living in the, lakes, uh, the uh, Olympic Hills area for the last 15 years, and throughout these 15 years, I keep on hearing the only one thing, and I keep on experiencing too that area has become famous for a lot of criminal activities because that area is not livable or walkable. In the evening, you don't see family can walk around and have some good time and so that's why those activities are on. It, is, it looks like run down ghetto areas. Uh, it's very scary. Uh, we can convert that area by, as I tell you, as a city council member, I would go out and use my network to bring in the investments right there. My question is if Nintendo can come to Redmond, why Nintendo cannot come to Aurora Avenue? My question is that. Why? Because we have not taken an interest in it. The moment we get those investments, everything will change. Everything will change. You can see those areas being so, as the time is going out, but you can create those Columbia City, Olympia kind of liveliness there in that area. Then Aurora will be turned as something else, not like as it is defined now. We can make big change. David and then Clayton. And you you made a reference uh, uh, during our prior conversation uh, um, to uh, creating uh, good paying jobs uh, um, for locals, not necessarily big corporations, but local employees. And I'm just wondering uh, um, who makes up that workforce and, and how do they get credentialed and trained and, and uh, because frankly there's tons of open jobs in Seattle that I that the, the population may not be qualified for. That's why they're open. Well, we have not tapped into a solid uh, force that is our youth. Um, we have youth in our University of Washington, right there. We have Seattle campus, Bothell campus. 
both of them have computer education management both of them have got like we have almost like 10000 plus student force there have we ever seen that they are being given some kind of a entry level jobs or some kind of a intern jobs to have, to have those experience i don't think so they are all going out i have i i personally i'm in the board of the coastal school of business i see most of the students when they graduate they always move to the east coast none of them stay back here very few of them stay back here and we have got so many young force we can use them here and when the company comes to make an investment washington state is the best state, one of the best state to make the investment and the life will be a lot easier because it is beautiful too it is a, it is a beautiful weather and, and they will be attracted to come here and uh, we we have not tried it have we tried to get the investments why they are going to office open office in downtown why not, why not that area that is my focus it is district centric i want to focus on my district 5 so my objective is to get as many business to district 5 fast that will change the thing and so it time out uh, Clayton, Elizabeth? I refer to those. Elizabeth and Clayton? Thank you. Um, okay, so what policies would you like to implement that could make Seattle a leader in climate change mitigation? Well, uh, being from India, I can, I can see the effect of not doing anything for the climate change. Even our, in our neighborhood, California, is running out of water. Okay, and some people believe, don't believe in climate change. They think that this is just happening due to all my days, uh, blessings or whatever it is. No offense to that, but there is something called science. Uh, I, I, I believe in science. I certainly believe in science and, and my fellow friends in India started believing in science now. Uh, and they are really acting upon it. And the whole world is working upon it. So we should, we should take the advice of the scientists and, and, and change our policy. Um, we as a public servant don't know much about the climate change scientifically. We are, we are being educated. But we, we have experts in this country. And University of Washington, other educational institutions have been working on this. Washington State has become a leader in, in those policies now. And presently, Governor Inslee has, gone, has done a wonderful job to bring in those subjects. Some people will criticize it, and critics will be there all the time. But we should not, we should not give up. We should rather move forward and more diligently, more aggressively to adopt the policy for climate change. Yeah. Sorry, time up. Uh, I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more regarding sidewalks. Um, however. Um, when we talk about sidewalks, we're also talking about what? Wastewater treatment mm -hmm. and our facilities, therefore, which have just been built. Mm -hmm. So if we put a billion dollars, the mayor said last week it would cost $1.2 to to um, fix sidewalks in Seattle. Um, what's not apparent is how the wastewater treatment system that we have at West Point and Edmonds would the, the entire infrastructure of the city for, for collecting wastewater runoff would have to be replumbed. So have you given some some thought to that part of of uh, of the problem in terms of where that money might come from? Uh, as far as my knowledge goes, uh, the sidewalk building of sidewalks, of course, needs money. Uh, but the thing is, we have been waiting for 15 years, even more than that, for those sidewalks to be built. So what is happening now? You are going to pay more the more you wait for it. So it is, it is again coming back to the same question uh, whether I should do the sidewalk now or I should wait for another 10 years to build the sidewalk just because I don't have money. We need to find, that's what I'm saying, that we need to find source of revenue. The revenue comes when you bring in those economic investments into the city. Those are the source of revenue. 
when you bring in those EV5 investments for the affordable housing, the budget, the city budget can save some money to build those affordable housing units. You can use those revenues. You can create it. The revenue has to come from somewhere, right? So that's what my objective is to, if you can bring in investments to do something where city can be saved from spending those money on those affordable housing units, those money can be used for sidewalks, of course. Water treatment plant, that is necessary, that is essential for our environment. We need to have water treatment plant. We, we, cannot, we cannot just live without it. It is expensive, but those are the basic amenities, civic amenities people need to have. City has to spend for people, right? So that's all right. So I'll ask the last question. So sure. There are seven people running um, so far in District 5. Um, I, I yeah. think I speak for um, a lot of us that all seven bring something and are impressive and, and basically qualify yeah. for the office, um, including yourself. So I, I'm wondering, um, distinguishing yourself from the other six, what do you bring that no one else <coughs> would bring to the City Council? Well, um, <laughs> That's a, that's a good question because uh, there are seven of them, including me. And what stands out is uh, my experience in the economic, develop <coughs> economic development area. I have worked diligently uh, in this area for the last 10-15 years. I took it, the port of Seattle CEO to India to sign the first sister port agreement in 2011. And if you look at Washington state, it's a trade dependent state. But when we talk about trade here in the Washington state, it is misunderstood like is it commodity trade. Trade should not be confined to commodity. Trade should be research and development, education and collaboration, exchange of ideas, exchange of thoughts, and bringing in investments. My idea is to bring in investments to the Washington state to have those long sustainable manufacturing jobs, not the service oriented jobs. That is my idea. And that will give the economic boost to the state, to the city, to our neighborhood district. That's how it is different. All the rest, six of them, are not talking about this. Only me talking about this. I'm not bragging about it, but it is doable because we have done it. Okay. So we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Well, my, uh, the other way I could co uh, cover this, uh, I stand out, stand out is... Uh, youth empowerment is one of my agenda. We always talk that youth is our leaders for tomorrow. Youth is our nation builders. I sincerely believe that our nation building starts from the grassroots level, that is city level. Youth, the voting eligibility age is 18, but how many of them come out to vote? I've been here 15 years. I have seen elections too. I don't see young people come out to vote that way. Just one time, President Obama, first time around, I saw that enthusiasm in the, in, the, in the youth and the Facebook being used that way. But after that, there is a law, there is a, there is a downside. We need to bring that up. This would be given a platform in the city level to ask questions to our elected leader. They should come to the neighborhood meetings to ask pertinent questions why those things are happening. Whenever I go to the neighborhood meetings, I never see a youth there. I always see all adults 50 plus, 45 plus. That's not acceptable. That's not good. It is changing in India. It is changing in Europe. Wherever you go, the youth participation are there, but not here. So that's my one of my agenda. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah.